I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on Pattern Rules. We will talk about recursive and explicit pattern rules in this particular video. Let me tell you that this is one of the most important topics for our middle school students. They are introduced to algebra with the help of this type of example. So I'll rather go slow and ensure that all my viewers understand the whole concept. What we need to do here is to write a pattern rule for the given input-output pattern. So inputs are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The outputs for these inputs are 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. Now, if you analyze these inputs and outputs, you see that the inputs are increasing by 1, but the outputs are increasing by 3. They start at 4, but they increase by 3. So when you go from the first to the second term, you see that 4 plus 3 is 7, and then again plus 3 is 10 plus 3 is 13. So they are increasing by a fixed number. That is 3. Correct? Now if I have to write a rule for this, till now in our junior classes we had been using recursive rule. So let me write it down right at the bottom here. What is the recursive rule for this particular pattern? So a student will write start at 4 and then add 3 each time. Now this is also a pattern rule. We call it recursive rule since we are getting the next number from the previous number. So it's a repeated operation adding 3 each time. So that is being repeated. Do you see that? So that kind of a rule is called recursive rule. Now if you use recursive rule, then we have a problem. That is, if we want to know what is the output when input equals to 100. Now that really means that you have to add this 3 99 times to get to 100. That will take a lot of time and effort. Correct. So recursive rule is good enough when we are talking for some pattern rules extended to let us say 10 numbers. Right. Now as soon as we are looking into more options then Recursive rule has its limitation. So that's why we are coming up with a new type of a pattern rule which we are calling explicit pattern rule. Now let me define you a few terms. We'll say when input is 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll call this as our first term. We'll call the next one as our second term third term and so on right so sixth this becomes sixth term so every number is given the term number so this is the first second third fourth fifth and so on now in this particular pattern what do you notice we notice that the initial number or the starting number is 4, right? This is also called initial number. And between any two numbers, there is a difference of 3. Now, since this difference is constant and it is common for all, we say common difference.
is 3. So we'll write plus 3 since we are adding 3 each time, right? Now with the help of our starting number and common difference, we can actually come up with the explicit pattern rule. Let me show you how. Now if you notice, we start at 4. So if you want to find output, let me write here output equals 2. It is definitely more than 4. We have to add something to 4, which is our starting number, which we say initial number. Plus common difference. How many times? If I want to find output for sixth number, how many times did I add 3? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 1 less than 6. Perfect. If I want to find output for fifth number, how many times did I add 3? 1, 2, 3, 4 times. 1 less than 5. Correct. For 4, I have added 3 3 times and for the third term I have added 3 only 2 times. So if this is the term number in general we can say for nth term how many 3's will be added? 1 less than n. 1 less than n times 3. You get an idea? So the common difference is multiplied by n minus 1. If we are looking for output of nth term, do you understand? That is how we get our formula. So, in this particular example, we can write term number is written with t. So, we call this as t1. We'll call this as term number 2. This as term number 3. So, this will be called term number 6. And nth term will be called tn. So we can write term number n, tn, is equal to, in our case, 4, the initial number, plus 3 times n minus 1. Right? So actually this number n should also be smaller since I am using small n, right? So let me write lowercase n. Okay. n minus 1. Now, that becomes a way to give explicit rule. Now I could simplify this, which is 4 plus 3 n's minus 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. And that can be simplified and nth term can be written as 4 minus 3 is 1 plus 3 times n. So that becomes simplified form of our explicit rule. Correct. So if I write in this form, it is using common difference. And this is simplified form. At times, it may become difficult to write in simplified form. So I'll give you a trick to get to this result. Right. So here is the trick. Trick is... What is the common difference? The common difference is 3. So, to get the general term, which we are saying Tn, we will write 3 times n for sure, since I am adding 3. So, for the first term, 3 times 1 is how much? 3. How do I get 4? By adding 1. Do you see that? For the second term, what is 3 times 2? 3 times 2 is 6. How do I get 7? By adding 1. So you get a pattern rule directly without using even the formula. Perfect. But actual way, the way we teach is to write the general term as starting term or the initial term plus common difference times n minus 1 because 1 less 
Number of times 3 was added, right? To get to the sixth term, we added five threes, correct? And my shortcut trick is, once you know what common difference is, which is three, then how do you get four? We do like this, three times one is three. How do I get four? You add one to it to get four. Three times two, is 6. How do I get 7? You add 1. Do you get it? 3 times 3 is 9, but I need to get 10. You have to add 1. You get it? So, in this process, you can see that the rule is times 3 plus 1. Do you get it? And straight away you get your rule. So that is how you can directly get your explicit rule by looking at it. We know 3 times 5 is 15, but I want 16. How do I get the output of 16? I have to add 1 to it. You get the idea. Right? So that is how we get it. Now, if the input is 100, what is the output? Can you tell me? Clearly, it is 300 and 1. Do you see that? So that is a huge advantage of using explicit pattern rule. Straight away, we can find our answers without going through all of them in between. That is the advantage of explicit pattern rules and the power of algebra. How algebra? Since we introduced this variable n, n could be any number, right? It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 100. Any number n, right? That introduces algebra to you. And the rule which we are saying that nth term is 3 times n plus 1 is the explicit rule where n is a variable which can have any value. Perfect. So remember, here n is a variable. n is a variable. Variable means it can have any value. Perfect. You can write n as 100, 1000, whatever you want. You will know what is output for the given input n, right? So in our case, inputs will decide the output, right? So the input here is n, the output is tn. You can think like this also. So in different ways, I've tried to explain you this particular topic, recursive and explicit. So recursive is what you have been using so far, but it has its restrictions. You have to always add to the previous number to get to the next. So getting to the hundredth number is very time consuming. Explicit formula, on the other hand, straight away gives you the answer. That makes huge difference. I hope you understand and appreciate this concept. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. Share my videos with your friends. Thanks and all the best.